today we're looking at some vintage speakers that I got recently. This is a pair of Realistic Minima 7 speakers made in 1988. These came from the TV station. I originally got only this one because uh, the other one, while it wasn't in use at the time, um, it was in the works to put the speaker in use somewhere in the TV station. Both of these used to be in use, but then the TV station bought some new speakers. But uh, time went on, and this one never went into use. And eventually, recently, I asked again, I said, hey, is, is this speaker actually going to be put into use? And uh, station manager said, nah, it's not. So I was given the second one, and I'm glad to have the pair. Now, the unfortunate thing is, <laughs> if the TV station had put this one into use, they would have been sorely disappointed because it does not work. The driver was bad. Open circuit. How, uh, how disappointing is that? One good speaker and then one that has a dead woofer. No idea why. It looked absolutely fine, but it was completely open circuit, which is too bad. Because these are nice speakers. They're small, but they pack a lot of punch, and they're built extremely well. Radio Shack knew how to build a damn good set of speakers, or at least they knew how to source a set of speakers. I don't know if Radio Shack would have built these on their own, or if they would have sourced them from somewhere. But, uh... Radio Shack sold these uh, by the single speaker. They didn't sell them in pairs. They advertised these as being a good extension speaker. Like if you already had a set of stereo speakers and you wanted to like add a third speaker in a corner of the room or something. Or, or if you had a stereo system that you wanted to expand into a surround sound system. These were a good little, you know, extension speaker to buy. But they are damn good speakers. These are rated 40 watts, 4-0 per speaker. Really nice set of drivers in them. That's a real tweeter. And uh, it's a really damn good feeling and sounding set of drivers. The woofer here, really long travel, very soft rubber surround that 33 years later is still in great shape. Uh, really thick cone and, and center cap there. And this thing just belts out. It gets loud and it sounds excellent. Really excellent speaker. And this is a real wood cabinet. It's not, uh, it's not a wood grain wrap around MDF or whatever. As you can see, there is what appears to be MDF on the inside, but the actual outside of the cabinet is real walnut. These were $50 a piece, $50 for one speaker. So it's a damn shame that uh, this one had a bad woofer. Now, you can buy these woofers. You can go on eBay and you can find a few used woofers for sale. Some of them are used and, and there were a couple when I looked that were uh, new in the original box because Radio Shack actually sold this exact woofer as a replacement speaker, or what appears to be this exact woofer anyway, because uh, when I look in the catalog that these speakers were sold in, what appears to be an identical woofer was in their spare speakers section, but where these full speaker sets were uh, rated 40 watts each, the identical woofer was only rated at 10 watts, so maybe it's not the same woofer. I don't know, but it looked identical. But you can find these woofers on eBay, but uh, people either want too much money for them or the shipping made it prohibitive for me to find one. Um, if the U.S.-Canada border was open and I could have had it shipped to the U.S., I would have got one. But uh, that wasn't possible. So I've done something here and we're going to do a little bit of a test today. I did buy a new woofer to put in this one. Um, but obviously it's a little different. It's a brand new unit and I bought it from DigiKey and it's this. 
this driver, actually I, I believe it's a, advertised as a full range driver, not a woofer, but this was made by CUI devices who make a lot of speakers and piezo buzzers and stuff like that. They have a lot of stuff on DigiKey. And this cost me $16, I think, plus the standard $8 shipping from DigiKey. Had a few other things in that order, so I thought, hey, why not find the closest matching speaker I can get, and we'll try it. Maybe I'll get really lucky, and these speakers will sound identical enough to be suitable to use together, even though they've got different woofers in them. This speaker is not quite as beefy as the original. Uh, it's only rated 20 watts versus 40, if that's actually 40 watts and not 10 watts like the replacement driver in the same catalog is. Uh, the build quality isn't quite as good. Um, it's got nice travel in it, about the same amount of travel. Um, the surround, rather than being the same sort of plush rubber, is more of this vinyl-like material, but it's still very soft, very pliable. Just not as luxurious feeling. Uh, the center cap is quite thin plastic versus the uh, fabric cap there. It's a little bit smaller. And the magnet is about as big around but uh, about two-thirds of the thickness. Quite a bit thicker uh, magnet on the original realistic driver. But we're going to put it in there and uh, see how it works. We'll uh, compare how these two speakers sound. So let me get this driver installed and then we'll come back. Well, there she be. Now something I didn't account for I didn't think I had to, was I made sure to buy a speaker that had the screw holes line up with the original, but the cage of the speaker right below the lip is wider than it is on the original driver. So the speaker can't actually go all the way in, it's sticking out like a millimeter or two, but I just screwed it down anyway. <laughs> the, uh, the fabric cover, whoops! The fabric cover still fits over and clips into place just fine. So, no problem there. I did only get the one fabric cover, by the way. And uh, <laughs> if I do keep that driver in there, this speaker will be the one with the fabric cover. Because this driver looks a lot nicer in the nude. Okay, let me hook these up to the white trash hi-fi system. I'll uh, find some safe music to play as a test and uh, we'll see how it works how it sounds and do these sound similar enough that having different woofers does not de detract from the quality of the sound we'll find out alright original driver on the left new driver on the right uh, NPR news is just reading the news right now President Biden cites recent economic reports as evidence that his economic agenda is... I'm going to turn the balance control left and right. ...rising gas prices and inflation. While today's consumer price report points in that direction, we will keep a careful eye on inflation each month and trust the Fed to take appropriate action if and when it's needed. Prices rose 5.4% in July compared to where they were a year ago. The administration has attributed increasing prices to shipping bottlenecks and other temporary supply chain disruptions. But Biden's also taking some political hits as Republicans seek to blame him and his spending plans. Franco Ordonez, NPR News, the White House. So what I'm noticing so far is the new driver has less bass, but it's more clear. Vocals are clearer, less muffled sounding. So, I've won some and I've lost some, at least when it comes to speech. A crappy Pickwick pressing of Scott Joplin's rags should be safe for you too. I actually like this record. I'm a fan of Scott Joplin's work and the guy who played these for Pickwick did a very good job. Pickwick just wasn't known for pressing high quality records. 
This one sounds good. It's a bit damaged though. Quite a few places on it that skip. I don't think I showed the backs of these. Realistic Minimus 7W, the W meant walnut. Catalog number 40-2039B, 8 ohms, 40 watts max. Custom manufactured in Japan for Intertan Incorporated. Intertan was the name of Radio Shack's or Tandy Corporation's international arm, so these speakers would have been purchased in Canada. So manufactured in Japan, I wonder Who's a speaker manufacturer in Japan who might have made these for Radio Shack? Koss? Sony? I don't know. Do you guys know? Uh, there's the date code. August of 1988. Serial number 123. The other one has serial number 009 something. So these were made pretty close together. Got a mounting tab right there, which is nice. Mount them on the wall. And uh, your spring terminals. Very nice. So a summary of my findings after listening to these for half an hour or so. Definitely this driver does not have as much bass as the original driver. For example, with this speaker in play, I could actually, you know, put my hand on the shelf and feel the vibration but not as much with this driver. It was barely detectable. But at the same time, this driver has more clarity to it. Um, I can hear it especially with vocals. Um, the vocals are just more clear, less muffly than this driver. And I can achieve most of the same effect if I were to crank up the treble with this speaker. But it's still not quite as clear sounding as this one is. So that could be a function of the age of the driver. It is a 33 year old driver. Or it could just be, you know, the differences in the drivers. Something I thought of though, and I didn't, I, I didn't think of this until midway through my listening session. Speakers have to break in. New spe speakers will sound different when they're new versus after they've had a while to play. 
And so once this driver breaks in, it could end up sounding, you know, either sounding more similar to this one, like this could develop better bass response once it's broken in, or perhaps that already improved clarity could get even better and this driver could end up being mark markedly uh, better than this driver. I don't know. But that's something I uh, did not remember until now, is that speakers have to break in, so it's not really a fair comparison. I'd have to give the speaker a good, you know, I don't know if it takes a few hours or a few days of, uh, of playing time to, uh, to break in. What you'll notice, though, is that the two drivers have uh, quite a big difference in compliance. Compliance is... Uh, a measurement of how well something springs back into its original form once it's been compressed or expanded. Um, so for example with this driver if I put pressure on it and then let go it immediately snaps back. With this driver though when I put pressure on it and let go it takes like half a second maybe even three quarters of a second to uh, go all the way back to its resting position. Now whether age plays a factor into that, because the rubber does feel very nice still, very pliable. Um, so maybe it's just the design of the driver. And maybe once this driver, actually I actually read when I was looking this up that new drivers will be, will have higher compliance because they'll be stiffer. And once they break in, they'll have a bit looser movement to them. And they won't be as uh, free to spring back immediately when pressure is released from them. The springiness in this driver isn't necessarily a good thing. It's just stiffer because it's new right now. So I might find, once these are broken in, that uh, they sound quite similar. I don't know. Or maybe they'll just always have that noticeable sonic uh, uh, difference in sonic quality between them. But you know what? I don't freaking care. You put these two speakers together, and they are a damn fine set of speakers. I'll tell you what. Different drivers or not. Uh, yeah, these sound excellent. I am 100% happy with how this has turned out. I am not an audiophile. I used to think I was an audiophile, and then I found out what uh, being an audiophile really means, which is being a pretentious jerk. I'm just a person who loves music and loves audio equipment. An audiophile would never, well, an audiophile would probably call these speakers crap anyway, but an audiophile would definitely never accept an otherwise matching pair of speakers with different drivers in them, but I don't care. These sound great, and they look great, and, uh... Yeah, these are awesome. When I first got these speakers together and found out that one of them had a bad woofer, I actually went out and bought a second set of speakers, which I'm now using with the White Trash Hi-Fi system. Um, they are also vintage speakers, much larger than these, and they sound great, even though they would have been pretty cheap speakers for the time. So I'm actually using them now, so I won't be switching them back out with these. But uh, I'll find a use for these someday. I'll keep them around. They might make good computer speakers, perhaps, if I ever get another uh, little amplifier, something I can hook up to the computer and uh, use these for computer speakers rather than uh, the little speakers built into my second monitor. That would be cool. But regardless, very nice speakers nonetheless. Great looking, great sounding, loud as hell blow the windows out of this place if I asked them to and uh, yeah there you go so uh, I now have a working pair of speakers so thanks so much for watching I do appreciate it a special thanks to these fine folk right here who support me via patreon and I will see you in the next video